All right, all right, let's jump right in. And today's buy was up 0.92%. And so far, price is following very close to what I drew, which is that we would come down here towards this gap for that 497 and then likely start bouncing higher back towards 507, but that will require the break above 502. Now today we did test 502 and we did get resistance there. So tomorrow we need to see if the bulls can push through that level to confirm we are going to 507. And I do believe even in the bearish scenario, there's a good chance we're going up there to 507. The only difference is in the bearish scenario, we're going to get rejected from a lower high and then continue back down towards 491. And this is very easy to visualize because you can see that we are currently making lower highs and lower lows. But if you zoom out and you look at the weekly chart of SPY, we're currently sitting on top of the rising weekly 20 period moving average, which is a possibility that this pullback is over and a lot of people are getting extremely bearish on SPY. And from closing high to closing low, we've only dropped a little bit more than 5%. Now that does leave more opportunity for a deeper correction, but if we only pull back 5% and we continue back into a bull market, a lot of people are going to be surprised and caught off guards, but that's just how bull markets work. There's always going to be a lot of negativity in a bull market, and that's what actually fuels them and makes them even stronger. And if you want to wait for a price action confirmation that we've seen the end of this pullback, we will eventually need to get some kind of higher low pullback into a bull breakout, and the bull breakout will be the closing prices above 507. So there's going to be lots of ways to play this because we don't know exactly how the price action is going to behave around these levels but more importantly we know the levels to pay attention to and we can follow price from there remember be prepared for either of those scenarios whether we get the lower high into a lower low or if we get a higher low into a higher high you want to be prepared for that scenario as well as far as i'm concerned this is still a bull market especially looking at the weekly charts and if you look at iwm it is also getting a bullish bounce off of a weekly 200 period moving average so if you zoom out and you look at your weekly charts a lot of these charts simply just look like a pullback within a bull market still we'll play it day by day but do not get overly bearish remember the crowd is typically going to get it wrong so if everybody around you is also bearish that is not a good sign that you should be bearish as well don't get ridiculous and start over leveraging long positions during a pullback but also be responsible and you should not be trying to short the hole either so no matter what you're doing there should be trades for either bears and bulls alike this is plenty of volatility and you're getting plenty of opportunities to short at resistance or try to long near support just manage your risk and keep the leverage under control even if you're playing put options that is still extremely risky because as you saw today the vix got completely crushed and that is going to dry up the premiums in that market as well so manage risk around these critical levels watch that resistance up here right around 502 and 507 and to the downside we're looking for support zones between 495 and 491 on the nasdaq 100 triple q's we were up 1.01 percent today and the triple q's had a little bit of a capitulation look on friday because we broke down below this support zone right around 423 and flushed way outside the lower boulder band and came all the way down to this gap fill down here at 413. So that gap is now filled and we were extremely oversold and today we did bounce back to that lower Bollinger Band right around 419 but we still haven't filled this gap above here at 422 so I do think there's a very good chance we will go up there and test that resistance right around 423 with tomorrow's price action. Now if we go up to 423 and get a rejection we could come right back down towards 417 and then if we break that we're looking for 411 and a gap fill down here at 407.5. So keep in mind this still is a possibility that we continue lower but remember what I told you on spy is if we start getting these bull breakouts and we do break through resistance and we start getting higher lows into higher highs do not hesitate to get bullish because we are still in a bull trend on the weekly chart so if you want to wait for the confirmation to get bullish you're looking for a higher low into a higher high and then a push all the way back to that breakdown which was the breakdown below that support between 434 and 435 now at some point I do think we are going back up to that price to test it as resistance and that is where I'd be very cautious staying bullish once we get to those prices that could be the next lower high before we go much lower and if we're going to get bullish we just simply need to see price breaking above that level and confirming that we are getting the bull breakout. So you have plenty of time to wait for confirmation in the short term I do think we're going to continue this bounce to a higher resistance level and then from there we'll see if we get the lower high or the higher low and then we'll just continue to follow price from there. On the Dow Jones we were up 0.68% today and intraday we had a direct hit of the price target which was between 383 and 385 and I told you if we were going to get bearish we needed to see a rejection from here and then a continuation of the downtrend which is going to require a confirmation of the break of support at 377. If we break 377 that is a very clear Clear, lower high lower low breakdown so do keep that in mind and that should take us down to 370 now if we don't break down and we hold above 377 and we can come up here and break above 385 then we'll be looking for a push all the way up to about 395 
385. So this is going to be a very bullish development if the Dow Jones can get back above 385. So that is without a doubt a very critical resistance level. So if you're shorting the Dow, you want to consider getting out of your shorts if we break above that. And if you want to wait to get bullish here, we just simply need to prove this was a higher low into a higher high breakout. And then the Dow Jones is well on its way to 395. So it's very clear price action we're looking for in both scenarios. And all you simply need to do is have a plan for either of those scenarios and then let the price action do all the talking. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we're up 1.12% today. And the Russell 2000 looked very solid today, bouncing off of this strong support that I told you to watch at 193. And above 193, we're looking for a bounce higher towards 196 and then 199. To get confirmation, we're ending the downtrend. I want to see price action above 199. And if we get rejected from a lower high and we break support at 193, then I'm looking for the price target down here right around 189. So watch 193 as support and 196 as resistance. And if we break 196, we're looking for 199. On the RK ETF, we're up 1.43% today. And we are still trying to hold this support right around 42.4. And we still have a gap to fill up here at 44.25. If we bounce and break above the gap fill, then we're looking for a push back higher towards 45.7. And if we break support at 42.4, we're looking for a push lower towards 41. And then below 41, we have a gap to fill right around 40. On the VIX, we were down 9.47% today. And we hit the price target, which was down here at 17. And that is where I told you the VIX would likely crush during the bounce. And I'm not even convinced that the bounce is over with. So there is a good chance the VIX does continue crushing back down towards 15. This would go hand in hand with the bounce to a higher resistance. And then if we continue to see fear leaving the market and we get the bull breakout, then we'll be looking for the VIX to break down below 15 and start its way back down towards this bottom of the range at 12.8. So I do think we'll see the VIX crushing a bit more as we continue to bounce in the indices. And then we'll have to see if we get a bearish lower high rejection and then a spike in the VIX as we get more fear yet again. Again. On Bitcoin, we're currently trading just above 66,000 and we did bounce off of the bounce or die level that I told you if we could not hold support at 61,000, we would likely see a flush down to support at 52,000. But as you can see, that support level did hold and we did break the resistance at 65,000. And we are currently testing the resistance at this negatively sloping 20 daily moving average at 66,600. If we break above that, then we're looking for a push higher towards the top of this range at 68,500. And if we get a break above that, we should be well on our way to the price target at 75,000, where I do believe we're going to find more sellers yet again. So you can stay bullish above 61,000 or 65,000 and use those as your risk level. And if we break below those, just get risk off. On NVIDIA stock, we were up 4.35% today and NVIDIA did break down below that gap fill support at 823 on Friday and we did push to the bottom of that range at 780 and then just above the breakout level, which was above 740. So between 740 and 780 is now the critical support zone now that we're below the 50 EMA and below the 50 EMA, you can also stay risk off until we get proof from the price action that we're getting a bull breakout, which is going to be the break back above 823 with higher lows and higher highs. If we come down to 740 and break below it, then we're looking for a gap fill down here right around 689. And if we get a bull breakout above 823, you're still looking for resistance right around 857. On Tesla stock, we were down 3.4% today and we're getting into earnings tomorrow after the bell. And we are going into earnings with a capitulation look, which we did see last year as well. And typically when Tesla does capitulate, it recovers very quickly with a V-shaped recovery. And that is something that I would not roll out after earnings. And the reason I tell you this is because we now have three gaps to fill to the upside at 146, just below 154, and just above 161. That is going to be a lot of buying pressure if we just fly through and fill those gaps. And that's likely going to push us all the way back into the 170s. So do not roll this out. You could easily play this around the support down here at 138. And if we break down below 138, we're looking for 133.5. On Apple stock, we were up 0.51 percent today and apple did hold this support down here right around 165 and we're going to see support between 163 and 165 and if we break that it is going to look like apple is heading into a bear market heading into earnings which could bring it back down to the bottom of this range right around 158 to 156 so just be very cautious here if you are catching the falling knife i think it is okay to do that as long as you're managing your risk at these support levels and we may not have any catalyst in apple until earnings which is going to be very early in may but the rest of the big tech earnings are getting kicked off as early as this week and we're going to see plenty of catalysts within the big tech sector which is going to push apple around as well so manage your risk as a bull between 163 and 165 and if you're currently shorting apple i think you could stay short while it's below 169. so jumping back over the s p 500 this is going to be a very volatile week because we have earnings season and i do think there's a very good chance we saw some big tech capitulation on friday so don't rule out the possibility that a bottom is already in within a bull market on the weekly chart and we've just had a pullback and we're getting ready to go higher we don't have any proof from the price action that that's the case other than the fact that spy held support today so if you are catching falling knives just 
remember you need to manage your risk in case the knife just continues to fall. Remember, do whatever fits your risk tolerance. You can just wait it out and wait to have more confirmation of either a deeper correction or confirmation that the pullback is over and we're getting ready to go higher. So it doesn't matter how you're trading, just make sure you're managing your risk and do not do that over leverage options trading crap that a lot of you are still trying to do. You're going to get wiped out way too quickly on just a couple of losses and that is just not a sustainable profitable strategy. So be disciplined, be patient. This is still going to remain a volatile market until we get confirmation that we're back into the bull trend and then we'll see volatility dying down as we go back into a smooth trend or the market is going to remain volatile and we're going to continue to see panic selling and over leveraged longs getting wiped out, which is going to lead to more liquidation events. Nobody knows for sure exactly what's going to happen. That's why I always tell you to follow your price action and have a trade plan prepared for either scenario. And that is what we're going to continue to do on the Stocks Channel Discord server. So if you want to come trade with me and get access to all of my intraday updates and technical analysis, as well as my trade ideas, come join us over at the Stocks Channel Discord server. You can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.